Hi folks, Moose Peterson here. Want to talk to you about One Image HDR. I'm not going to talk about the controversy. I just want to walk you through the steps that I'm doing and maybe if some of it works, you'll want to play with it as well. Now let's just go into it just right off the bat. You're seeing I'm using Photomatic Pro 3.2 64-bit. 64-bit uh, because why? Well, point by God is with you. It's faster. I can, you know, with a Dell M6400, I can literally buy time because it's working faster and I need that. I'm going to start off by going to Preferences, setting up a couple of things here. If you can see what's checked, just pause the video and look at it. Write it down. Okay, there you go. Now, Files, Information there, Raw Files, that's what I'll be working with. I'm sitting here going to be, you know, setting these as you see okay because all this is important because what I'm going to do now this is remember Windows based it's slightly different if you're running the Mac click on file open and you see I've already done a couple here well what I'm going to do is show you ones that work and ones that don't work okay this is one that I thought worked pretty well now what is it about it that makes it work versus one that doesn't work? Well, here's my my thought on the process. When I go out shooting, this is what's going through my head. For the one image HDR to really kind of make a difference, we need light going on in the photograph. Now I'm not saying you need more than five stops. You don't need less than five stops. You need light in general. So in other words, you have a strong light source coming from one direction. There may be another light coming from a little bit different direction, not so strong. And another light coming from another direction, maybe not even as strong as the first two. You have light that's happening and playing in the photograph. That seems to be a key component for this one image HDR. So if you're shooting on an overcast day, an overcast day, right, is just this big, giant, soft light coming from above and wrapping around, it doesn't work so well. And I'm going to show you. So when you do this, you've done it correctly, you're going to get this little box that says you've created a pseudo HDR. You click OK. It opens it up. Click on Tone Mapping. And what I'm going to do is leave my, it open here for a second. You can see my settings over here. In other words, just click the pause button on the video. Take a second and look at them. Because this is the general settings I have. Click on Process. And once it gets done, you're going to do a, a save, and you save the file, and away you go. I'm not doing major moves within Photomatic Pro itself. I'm going to let Photoshop be my finishing tool. Why? It has more flexibility, and I think a few more tools that we can use. Okay? So it's going to get done. I'm going to wait a second here. You can see that it's processed in the final image, and you can see it's not really, you know, there it is. Okay? So you're with me so far. I hope so. Now I'm going to go over to Photoshop. Open up that file. So here it is. I'm going to hit the F key. It gives me the full frame. Hold down the space, car, space bar. Let's move it around. The first thing you'll notice that I've done, I have run define. Okay, why? Well, if we, we zoom in a little bit, you'll see. Okay, we have and we are breaking pixels. Here's the before. And there's the after. Okay, we're breaking pixels. I don't want to have those pixels all broken, so I run define first. Next, I'm going to sit there in this little outer, outer marker. S is in for Sam. Hold down the Alt Option key, and I'm going to make that go away. It bugs me. Okay. Now, I'm going to come over to my favorite tools, Nick. And as you can see, this is the photomatic image. And I'm going to come over to my next select of tools. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enhance the light. I was talking about the light. Now, the light's coming in underneath this fog, like this, okay? And this fog and this light bouncing around is what's making it come together and happening as a one image HDR. I've got the dark black and I've got this gold color. Well, I'm going to make that color even more pronounced. Come over to Tonal Contrast. You can see instantly by its settings, I'm going to bring up the saturation. You know, I can bring up the mid-tones a little bit, bring up the highlights, hold down the space bar. You can see the before and after. Click OK. But what really drew me to this image is not only the curve here. I like this curve and straight line going to this little boat going out. 
It's actually a Coast Guard going out. But it's the sky here. Okay, that sky. So I'm going to come over here and make it even more dramatic. Graduate neutral density. Okay. I already have it set up. You can see the before and after. Uh, you can see the settings here. Again, hit the pause on the video if you want to check those out. Click OK. Okay, and there is the basic finished photograph. Real quick and easy. Now let me go to a shot here that I don't think works. Let's talk about why it didn't work, at least in my mind, the reason why I think it kind of <laughs> fell apart. I mean, this is really kind of sucky, in my opinion, this whole photograph. Uh, definitely uh, didn't work. Why? The first and major reason, overcast light. The lighting, okay, you can already see into the shadows. HDR didn't work in the scenario. The light's just too flat. Not enough, not enough color coming from a dynamic range of light to make things happening. Next, you know, because of that, it's trying to make something happen. You come over here in the corner, you can see all this purple color fringing. Yeah. Okay, so this photograph sucks. <clears throat> out of here. Now, one that I thought turned out really cool, and I actually, you know, this is the one that was for sure when I took the click, I knew I was going to make it into this, is this shot here of the Oakland Bay Bridge going into San Francisco. It already had that kind of look to it. You've got sodium vapor lights. You've got, I don't know, whatever kind of lights those are. You've got all these different light values. In other words, different Kelvin temperatures. I've run to fine. Next thing I'm going to do to make this and finish it is come over to, again, Nick. I'm going to come over first to Tonal Contrast. I'm going to not have as much uh, Tonal Contrast as the last shot. Holy cow. That's enough to give you acid nightmares. Yeesh. Okay, so let's bring that back down. I mean, seriously, you know, it's, it's fog, it's city lights. Who really knows what the color should be? It's not like I remember them. Okay, hold down the space bar before and after. Punches that up a little bit. Okay, say OK. Next thing I'm going to do to this photograph is uh, one of my favorite things, and that is to bring in Glamour Glow. Uh, Glamour Glow, it just does kind of like it says, makes a glow. And, you know, when you think of lights and fog in San Francisco, you kind of like think of that effect. So it's not really a big stretch. And Glamour Glow is really simple to apply. You can see it off the bat. Hold down the space bar. There's the before and there's the after. So it's kind of taking out a little bit of the, the uh, black punch from tonal contrast, smoothing it out a little bit. Yet it brings out the glow of the lights itself. You know, I didn't change the sliders at all. It's just right out of the default settings from it. And, and, and that's it. You know, there is the, the final photograph. So, you know, hopefully it gives you some ideas, some thoughts, and perhaps you'll sit there and move past the controversy and just, just go play. And that's the whole point. You won't learn if it works for you or doesn't work for you if you don't play. Sum it up, though. Photomatic Pro, we're letting it do kind of the, the, the really big heavy lifting, and then we're using Photoshop to do the final finishing touches. Thanks for stopping by, and go out and make a good click.